Stay tuned for the Smooth Fixed Fridays, 1 p.m. ET, 6 p.m. UK, and at 7 Central Europe. Yeah, I had a funny head, man. I just don't feel comfortable filming myself with this thing on. Folks, on the edge of the woodland here, it's autumn. Got my survival knife. Ooh, let's not get dirty. SA6 and today that's all we got well it has some paracord on it some secret needy tricks in the back here but that's for later got a water bottle backpack full of camera gear drone two cameras GoPro and first aid kit mainly that normally I wouldn't need that if this was a real wilderness survival scenario I'll be going that way and will already be safe because that's clearly civilization over there weather is good at the moment but you know this is Ireland before you know it the rain comes in so we better hurry up and get a bit of a shelter going before darkness and that's not a lot of time anymore only two hours I'd say and it is getting really dark already Oola. Oh, that's handy. The terrain is really uneven. Badger, I think. Or is it a foxhole? That's definitely being used. Okay, let's leave this place. Where are we setting up camp, folks? It's difficult. Yeah, one big swamp land up ahead on that side. We gotta go all around, but we're losing daylight. Hmm, tricky business here. Hmm, is this the place? I don't know, it's a nice cover over there. I think for at least an hour or so I already have been exploring around. Very swampy, very difficult terrain. Very rough, not much shelter materials at hand. But time is really running out. We have to make a decision. There's a lot of fallen trees, you know, with big uh, massive root systems as a cover. But usually, in front of them is very wet. Mm. Pretty good sheltered here. <coughs> is this it, folks? Is this it? Oh, there are holes in it. Wet. So I started this challenge about two hours before dawn. And you might say, Julius, you didn't plan things properly. It's a bit last minute. But 
Hey, that was exactly the point. Because in a survival situation, things don't go as planned. You likely be on the end of the day, things don't go your way. You have almost no time anymore to fix things properly. Yeah, as it is still dry, I figured let's get fire material and get that sorted. But now the question is, do you put time in your shelter? Make that proper. Do you put time in making a fire? Initially I thought tomorrow is fire and today I just make a good shelter and that's it. But now I'm, I'm doubting it again. I almost have no light left to make this shelter proper. So maybe the last bit of light we should use to try and make a fire. But if we not succeed, we need to have shelter, you know? The question I often ask when doing these kind of challenges, of course, it depends on the circumstances. Dylan and me, we put this actually in a reality uh, scenario. One of my favorite Smooth Fix videos, the shelter battle, where we both make two shelters and uh, see what performs best, the lean-to variant with fire or debris shelter. Oh, that's handy with an essay, isn't it? A little bit damp still. I don't think it's dry enough. I want this piece then. No. No, I don't think I want to chance it with this stuff. I need drier. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, a sip of water. Good morning folks, funny hat is back again, I got myself a nice uh, reed uh, blanket, I figured this was the most effective way to get this quick shelter done, just have myself uh, covered in reed, yeah it was good, I'm dry, I wasn't too cold, no I've been way colder in the past sleeping in those natural shelters without fire, there's mold all on top of my ceiling, in the soil and sometimes a bit of soil uh, comes down you know so that's lovely and just now the minchies start to come yeah it's been drizzling all night a little bit but no heavy rain yet but the heavy rain might come get things going and get that fire going and a proper shelter and use my my jacket as a little blankie My firewood should be nice and dry behind there. Yeah, look. 
I need that one. You know, I'm going to be here for a couple days, so you better make sure that in the beginning you have the best location. So that morning I took a little more time to properly look around for a better shelter location. And in fact, I found something very covered that suited me better. It had a fallen log, so this I could use as a natural terrain future. And this saves you a lot of time using those natural terrain futures, rather than building a shelter all from scratch, building the frame and everything. And all the effort I put in the previous shelter was really only cutting that reed. I could easily bring it over to the new shelter, so I didn't waste much time with making an, uh, another shelter, you know. Rain, rain, rain. Oh, oh, oh. Water reed, definitely the material to go here to waterproof my shelter. It's uh, easily harvestable in large quantities. And uh, I was thinking, is this what future roundhouse episode days are gonna look like? Harvesting reed, we'll see. The midges, uh, you know, loud. Look how the drips slide over the reed leaves. Damn branch right in my entrance path. Couldn't break it, couldn't bend it. Kilo calories wasted. Applying the reed to your shelter. 
Do you put it the way it grows or do you put it upside down with the leaf tops on the bottom? This is an interesting one um, and I've seen discussions about this in the bushcraft community in the past and for thatching a roof you definitely put the tops of the reed on top so the way it grows but with thatching roof the reed doesn't have its leaves anymore in this case the reed does have leaves and we're using it as a natural shelter so in this case I think it is better to put the reed upside down so I think I should have put them the other way around than I did here in the video because this way the leaves are all over the place on the top and I think water would more easily shed in this way oh man it's soaking soaking wet I think it will continue for the whole day I'm happy I have my dry fire material but even then in this circumstance it's tricky okay my old shelter and things start to leak here and this is my firewood this is not a good situation I gotta move it to the new shelter but how to do this without getting it wet that's the question I found this yesterday and here I probably can keep my stuff dry. Tinder, pick that up with stick, not get it wet on top of that. I think it's slowly time to hide underneath this and uh, do a bit of bow drill carving. But wish me luck, man. Under these circumstances, it's for no one easy. Soaking, soaking. Yeah, the problem is now, guys, if I'm not active, I'll get really cold in this wet. <laughs> My shelter, folks, my shelter. Hmm. Hmm.
I wasn't even sure if I wanted to really do a bow drill in this challenge because we have seen it many times before on the Smooth Fixed and I figured maybe I should just bring a combustion device and uh, get over that and focus on other things. Anyways, it was already a year ago I did it for the last time so uh, I figured it's a bit part of a typical Smooth Fix challenge so better get on with it and uh, the bow drill is really the most convenient way I guess to make a fire if you don't have a combustion device you know you can use boot lace as a cord if you don't have any other cord so here under my shelter things are properly dry now and um, that's really required when you, you go bow drilling you first need to find a dry spot to do it and then hope that your materials are also mm. dry enough So I start with slowly warming up that bow drill set without giving much pressure or pace. So uh, it takes barely any energy here. Uh, and then wait for the first smoke to, to arise. Significant smoke. And this is the moment I up the pace and the pressure, but definitely not giving it my all. And uh, in this phase, we are filling up the notch with dust. And we, we continue on so till the notch is properly filled. And then, yeah, here's the moment I'm gonna give it my all to lighten and lighten that notch. Very close. We are very close. Folks, I'm gonna drink my last sips of water. I'm gonna take out my jacket and then I'm gonna give it my all. Maybe also put the funny hat off. Maybe that helps. Let us be blessed. At least it kind of stopped raining a bit. Yeah. We've seen it in the past here on Smooth Fixed. Doing the bow drill under these circumstances in uh, wet conditions it has been difficult. One really shouldn't underestimate how difficult the bow drill can be. Um, in warmer climates a bow drill can be very easy but here the atmosphere is completely damp and my theory on it is that under these circumstances even if you have proper bow drill technique and you have decently dry materials the bow drill is very hard and sometimes impossible. However I think you need another technique to dry out your board and spindle. And this is called drying runs. Do a few drying runs before you start the real bow drill attempt. And it's a pity I don't apply this technique here because I knew already about it at the time. But you're so much in the mindset of I'm almost there, let's try one more time and we get there. We got a lot of brown dust, but it just doesn't ignite. Finally. Uh. 
eventually, with a bit of luck, it turned out that way. But for the same reason, it wouldn't. And I think then really those drying runs would have been the way to get it all done very smooth. And to see this in practice and test it out, Dylan and me felt inspired to do a little bow drill battle between each other. And uh, we used different techniques there and different materials. And uh, we'll see how and who gets the bow drill going that way. And uh, that's very interesting and stay tuned for that. It's a video coming up soon. Then I look back into my shelter and right where my feather sticks are, I see drips coming down. Those feather sticks be soaking. Yeah, that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. And of course I tried to keep everything dry and it was laying there under the log. It was supposed to be a dry place, but it wasn't. And this is your main uh, tinder bundle, it's completely wet. Smooth. It could very well be that you're cringing a few times when I touch those sticks and move them around. Um, even myself, I might cringe sometimes, but on the other hand, um, I am there seeing what is happening with my fire. I can, I'm the best to judge that situation there. And sometimes it's good to poke your fire a bit and in some moments you better not do it. You never know how it turns out if you would or wouldn't have done it. Um, so the, the idea here is the core of my fire is, is, is burning. That's the only thing that's burning. The twigs around it, on top of it, aren't burning. And, and at some point here, the core starts to burn out. So the core becomes really empty, while those sticks are, are just standing upright around it. And at this moment, I'm trying to put more fuel in the core, so to keep that core going. So you pack things more tight to keep that core alive. That's the idea anyways. And sometimes those moving all those sticks can definitely have the opposite effect and you killing your fire. That's really a talent. You have to develop that skill of feeling over the years by, by managing those fires under these hard circumstances.
more stuff. Oi, 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 oi. Yeah, now I'm here big time screwed. All my fire material used, no dry stuff anymore. And the bow drill, it, it's not going. I, I don't have fire. I don't have fire, I should start all over again. But this has cost me almost all day. So there's barely any time to get the bow drill going. It wouldn't be a life or death situation, but you're very much into trouble because I'm soaking wet. So I'll be suffering big time over the night um, if I don't have my fire on today, folks. If I don't have my fire on, you know, you need to keep yourself warm over the whole night doing exercises. You will burn a lot of energy doing that. Big time screwed, big, big time screwed. So I make the choice here to use some of my emergency equipment. I of course have some first aid with me and also this fire steel just in case I really get into a survival situation. You know, it's not like the TV shows where people get a lot of money to do some surviving, you know. It really has to stay a little bit of fun. So I make the choice to uh, use that fire steel and it's a big disappointment to myself. Yeah, that's the way it has to go here. Otherwise it's gonna be a struggle of a night. And uh, on the other hand, I was really close in getting that fire. And it was just really being unlucky that suddenly things started to drop on my feather sticks. I'm pretty confident that if those feather sticks weren't that wet, I definitely had on enough fire prep to get that fire going. But on the other hand, it, it tells you again, fire prep, so important. You can't risk having the bow drill going after all struggles and everything, having that ember finally, uh, and your fire prep is not, not on point. All of that energy and all of your materials might go wasted. We see you uh, on part two. Holy moly. Also check out our shelter battle. Yellow weather warning, sleet, no mock and scotter. After our first shelter battle in the Polish rain, it's time for shelter battle 2.0. Two guys, different approaches. And let's not forget about Jaeger. Our shelters better be ready before darkness and cozy enough to keep it warm during the night.